if kindness isn't normal in the world, the only way that I'm ever gonna change it is to make intentionally make kindness more normal in my life. It can be better, so I'm gonna be the person that starts making it better. And the only way that we change our world is if we collectively decide to make it better. I'm Kevin Atlas, and I'm bringing some of the most successful, most inspirational human beings on this planet into your classrooms. They beat the odds, they overcame adversity, and through that, they found a way to believe. I've partnered with Varsity Brands to provide the answers, the blueprints. I have this heart that bleeds for the youth of this country, so I fight as a soldier for change, and I want us all to learn to lead, and not just to elevate ourselves, to elevate each other. I'm looking for students nationwide to take action from what they learned from this series. This is how the world changes. It starts with you. Lately, it feels like the world is filled with hate, and that's gotta change. I've been fortunate in my life to be able to surround myself with people that are fighting to make that happen. I like to call them soldiers of change, and my good friend Houston Kraft is one of them. He travels the country spreading a message of kindness. So we moved from Maine to Seattle, which is a huge transition, and I know there's so many people that go through those transitions where you literally like, you pick up and you're in a brand new place. And you know, it's like that mix of like nervousness, but excitement for a new thing. But as a little kid, you don't really know what you're gonna face and you show up and I think I was just like the easy target, right? I was the new kid, I was short. I, eventually I was like part of this group of kids that was like the smart kid class. Day one at my new school, I remember being out at recess and some kids like, oh, you're part of the four, five, six class. I was like, yeah, they're like, oh, the, the nerd herd. And there was these group of kids that I, I don't think I'd ever talked to them before, but they made up this game where they surrounded me on three sides and they would pick up wood chips and throw them at me. And depending on where they hit me, it was worth more or less points. Like my head was worth the most. And uh, recess was supposed to be a fun time, not the game I wanted to play. <laughs> and I remember the first time it happened being genuinely confused. Like why, why do these kids who don't even know me, why are they so willing to hurt me? And I think anytime you're a part of anything different than the norm, right? Anytime we deviate from what's normal, um, people like to jump on us for it. And I don't think that's because we want to be cruel. I think it's just that we don't know what to do with things that we don't understand or things that are different than us. Uh, we don't get taught it. So the second or third time it happened, I remember thinking like, that they like liked my reaction. The more I told them to stop, the funnier they thought it was. To some effect, I remember sharing with my mom that I didn't want to go to school there anymore and her being like, oh, we'll figure this out. We'll talk to these kids, we'll talk to the parents. And then I said something like, I don't feel safe here. I remember my mom, you know, going full mom mode. And uh, I transferred schools. So I, I had to leave because I didn't feel safe. And that's such a, right, that's such a critical feeling that what we take for granted when we do feel safe and then when we don't, it's, there's like nothing worse. You know, a lot of us wear these masks and make it seem like everything's okay. I know I did. You pass other people in the hall, sit next to them during lunch, you never actually know what's going on behind that mask. So when you start picking on someone or calling them names, you have no idea the damage and hurt you could actually be causing. So why not take the opposite approach? Instead of breaking them down, why don't you start building each other up? For me personally, like what gets in the way of my kindness, which happens all the time. And, and for me, I, I realize it's, it's number one, incompetence, which is just to say, if I don't know how to do a thing, sometimes I avoid that thing. Right? So number two for me is insecurity. Like if I'm afraid of a thing, sometimes I avoid that thing. And the last thing for me of like what gets in the way of kindness is inconvenience, which is just to say, if I don't feel like doing a thing, <laughs> sometimes I don't do that thing. So I think about those things for me a lot of, I, I believe in kindness, I wanna be a kind person, but sometimes I don't know how to do it. Sometimes I'm afraid of it, and sometimes I don't feel like it. Right? Incompetence, insecurity, inconvenience. And when I think about what those three things have in common, it's the letter I. And I love that idea, right? Like of extreme ownership of like, the only reason why I don't show up 
and be kind. The only reason why I don't bother learning the skills of kindness, why I don't dig into the vulnerability of dealing with my insecurities, why I don't show up and think about what is worth fighting for in this world that's bigger than my feelings, the only thing that gets in the way of me being kind to other people is usually who? It's myself, right? So I can be what's wrong with the world, and I, I really fundamentally believe that the opposite is just as true. That I can work on the skills of kindness. I can be vulnerable and share my insecurities and overcome them. And I can declare something in this world that is so worth fighting for, so purposeful, that even when I don't feel like doing it, I'm gonna choose it anyways. And I can be what's right with the world. I've been on a mission to walk aside, on, alongside young people like yourself to realize that your number one job is the practice of kindness, that your number one job is to make kindness normal in this world, to leave your schools normal better than you found it. How do you spread kindness? How do you make kindness a habit within these schools to help cure them? It can be a habit, number one, if we teach the skills of kindness. Number two, if we teach why kindness is important, we need a purpose behind this thing. And then number three, like, well, then what does it actually mean to build habits, right? We have to provide practical, specific opportunities for people to exercise kindness in real relational ways um, if we're ever gonna get good at the skill or the habit of kindness, which then, once we create the habit of kindness, that dictates our culture, and culture is how we address what you just talked about. How do we deal with schools that are struggling, where people are feeling lonely, isolated, apathetic, well, we create a culture where we've taught the habits of something like kindness. The skill set of complimenting someone is the skill of seeing goodness in another human being and having the vocabulary and the vulnerability to actually share it with them in a way that is meaningful, um, specific, and profound. And that's a skill that I think all of us should work on. Hi, I'm Houston. Hi, Sarah. I like your dress tonight. It's, um, it's black and white. It reminds me of um, a zebra. <laughs> Sarah, you may not uh, know this, but zebras are um, cooler versions of horses. <laughs> and you seem like a cooler version of a human. <laughs> All right, we'll see you later. Okay. <laughs> One of the really cool exercises that Houston does in his workshops is called kindness affirmation. It's a way to express different levels of compliments to help encourage you to be a better human. I think that, that complimenting someone requires competencies of connection. And so along the way, like along the journey of this little goofy exercise, uh, we can teach uh, what it means to connect with people in meaningful, thoughtful ways so that those compliments get richer. There's a five pound compliment in my brain. There's like a level one compliment, which is literally like totally exterior. There's level two, there's level three, there's five pound, there's 10 pound, there's 100 pound weights that we can exercise through kindness, through something like a compliment. So what's this exercise called? Compliment creations. Awesome. Physical contact is important. We can go fist to fist, we can go hand in hand. we're brothers, man. So we hold, we can, we can hold this hold here. hold the nub too? You can I'll do hold that the nub weird. too. No, let's just do this. Okay, this it doesn't weird. reach that far. So. <laughs> uh, so this is my attempt at a, like a 30 pound compliment. When I look at you, I see someone who's, even though your body, your frame, seven feet is big, it's not big enough to contain uh, your heart and your passion, which is why it, it feels like your relentlessness, your uh, ambition spills out and it's contagious. And uh, I think that the, the best gift that you have is your willingness to lift others up along the way. That this is not a selfish pursuit, that this is a pursuit uh, driven towards a bigger good. And uh, the more people that win, the more that you win. And that is a, a disposition that you've earned. And I appreciate you for it. Respect, man. Mm -hmm. It's the world. It's an experience you never forget. Look somebody in the eyes and actually uh, just connect with them at that level. I'll literally never forget this moment, mm -hmm. and I can't tell you how much it means to me, but what an incredibly awesome exercise that makes a tremendous impact. Yeah. Get a hug? I want a hug, bud. Ah, oh, this little fella. <laughs> this little guy over here. Love you, buddy. Love you too, man. That was a cool exercise.
Man, I hope we have not maxed out on kindness. <laughs> I hope this is not as good as it gets because right now is not good enough. It seems like there's a gap. Houston's right, there is a gap, but that doesn't mean it has to stay that way. It's up to us to work together, to love one another, to spread kindness in order to make our daily lives just a little bit better. Life as a high schooler is hard enough, but we need to make kindness cool again. It takes 21 days to make a habit. What if you started for 21 days? Your challenge is to just give somebody a simple compliment. I like your shoes. I like your shirt. Your hair looks beautiful today. In 21 days, you won't even realize that you're doing it anymore. You'll just be spreading kindness and love everywhere you go. Hold the door open for somebody. Don't go to bed tonight without doing a kindness affirmation for somebody that means something to you. Let's make kindness cool again. It starts with you. If not you, then who? I think one of the biggest reasons why we, we don't like high school is because we feel like we have no impact or influence to make it the place that it can and should be. We get to declare what kind of school we go to by how we show up and treat each other. How we show up and treat our teachers changes the way ultimately they're going to treat us, I promise. <laughs> how we show up and treat each other in the cafeteria, in the hallways, before school, after school, it changes your experience. So you can either let it happen to you or you can own it.